Hi there. Well, I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on Homey Pro. Since I originally installed it and recorded the video, I've been trying different things and working on some ways to get some of the devices that I couldn't get working on the first run. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a follow up video, show you what has worked, show you what I'm still struggling with. Perhaps you've got some experience and some skills around Homey. You can give me some feedback. That'll be awesome. Let's have a look. Now, one of the things I really wanted to try and connect into Homey was WLED. I have a whole heap of these around the house and I couldn't find any way to connect them. But thanks to one of my subscribers, I found about this app called Dalor, D.A.L.O.R. And this basically allows you to connect Homey Pro to the WLED system. This was super easy. I managed to get them in here. As you can see, if we go into one, here is the TV strip. You can see over here that we can now adjust the brightness using the slider. We can also select any color that we want to, and we can even select primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. We can also go here into the settings of this, and we can go and change things like the icon, the zone. We can even go into the settings of the number of LEDs and sections, um, transition durations, duration time, um, modes. Uh, we've also got things like power usage. So this was a really, really cool integration. Now, once I've got this working, the next thing that I found was that they have something which is pretty cool. It's very similar to scenes in Home Assistant, but it's called focus modes. So when you create a focus mode, you select whichever lights you want to be part of the social uh, focus mode. But then you have these different settings, preset systems. Like, for example, we have the focus mode. If we look, it turns all the LEDs this sort of bluish color. But if I selected colorful mode, for example, we've then got a green, a red and a yellow. And if we went for the soul it then selects a bluish color, a darker blue, and a purple. So these are pretty cool. The next thing I was trying to get connected was my Reolink cameras. Now, when I approached Reolink, they said that there is this OnViv camera integration that can be used. So you'll see there is a little bit of information here, but not all that much. This is one of the um, apps that's been developed by the community. So it's not really fully fleshed out. So what I did was I went along and I did actually manage to get it connected. There you can see. And it has a couple of things like it has this switch on and off. Um, it then has these things like motion detected, noise alarm, um, last value known, face detection. It tells me that the SD card storage has failed. Maybe that's because it doesn't have an SD card in there. Um, it also gives me some um, little things telling me what's going on over here. And if we scroll down here into the settings, you'll see we've got the IP address of the camera. Um, we've got the username and the password. Um, we've then got things like a um, camera information. We've got the Mac address, manufacturer, the firmware version, IP address. Now it does have this snapshot mode on Viv snapshot and apparently you can put in a URL there, but I'm not exactly sure what URL this should be. And I couldn't really find any much information in order to help me with this. So as yet, I haven't managed to get any further with getting Reolink working within the Homey. Now with the Home Assistant app, I did manage to get some information coming in from Home Assistant. Things like the system monitor over here, you can see is pulling in. And it also brought in some of the devices that were connected. It tried to bring everything in, but only certain of the devices actually showed any content. So you can see here, for example, I've got these uh, Bluetooth based plant sensors from Xiaomi. They seem to come in fine. Um, we've also got these power management systems over here. These are basically power, power clamps that are being pulled off. Those are Sonoff devices. They are Wi-Fi power clamps, and these are pulling in. So it's interesting. It seems to pull in some things, and other things it won't pull in. 
Having a look at some of the other apps that I've got over here, if we go into new device, you'll see that it opens these all up. Um, so Shelly seems to work pretty well. Those all come in. I managed to get my LG Web TV to come in. The ring doorbell that I've got at the front, that managed to come in and that actually shows me a screenshot. Um, Roborock, I haven't managed to get connected as yet. Uh, SwitchBot seems to be, work pretty well on most of the devices. Haven't managed to get them all running yet. There's this Heimdall, which is like a similar to sort of an Alamo system, but I haven't managed to get that working yet. Um, Philips Hue, um, I haven't played much with that as yet. Sonoff, interesting enough, you've got two separate apps for Sonoff. You've got one for their Wi-Fi devices and another one for their um, Zigbee devices. That seems to work pretty well. Panasonic Comfort Cloud. This, for example, there's an app there, but it would not connect with my Panasonic air conditioner at all. So I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into Homey Pro. As I said, I'm still playing around with. I do like a lot of things about the device, but don't worry, I haven't given up on Home Assistant. That is still by far my favorite. Some of the key reasons that Home Assistant really still works for me. First of all is the fact that we have so much information available at our fingertips. So many videos, so many uh, web blog posts and things that we can access to try and solve problems when we're trying to work something out. That's something that I'm finding is lacking at the moment on Homey. There's a lot of information out, but nothing near like what is available on Home Assistant. One of the other things I did find challenging is that you can only create dashboards using the mobile app. There's no way to create dashboards in the um, web-based app at all. But anyway, that's all for now. I will keep giving you updates as I work forward with this device because I think there is some real value about it especially with that uh, workflow, graphical workflow engine. Well, that's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.